fait le soldat fatigué quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit. Que fait le soldat fatigué dans le matin qui brille Il va toujours du même pas quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit. Derrière sa charrue là-bas, dans le matin qui brille. Judang que là quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit, que fait cet adjudant que là dans le matin qui brille, il gueule jour et il la boit quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit, ça nulle vaut pas un bon soldat dans le matin qui brille. Que fait le capitaine Hardy quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit Que fait le capitaine Hardy dans le matin qui brille Il dort et ronfle dans son lit quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit. Comme il ronflait devant l'ennemi dans le matin qui brille. Général, quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit, que fait le glorieux général dans le matin qui brille N'a rien à faire de très glorieux quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit. Un général, personne n'en veut dans le matin qui brille. Soigner les vaches, c'est pas pour lui quand la guerre s'arrête, quand la guerre finit. Les vaches bouffent pas de la stratégie dans le matin qui brille. Alors que fait le général
Custer. General, didn't recognize you without your horse. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Lincoln wants us to write personally to the widows and bereaved mothers. You knew Major Bridges, didn't you? I did. Dear madam, as commanding general, I had the opportunity to know your late husband, Major Bridges, and I was present at his death. It may be of some comfort to you to know that he died like the coward he was, with his back to the enemy, climbing a fence to get away. What did you write? The usual, of course. He met his end unflinchingly despite the severity of his wounds and sacrificed his life so that others might live, et cetera, et cetera. Philip H. Sheridan, commanding general, Army of the Potomac. You're staying in the Army, aren't you, Custer? I like the life. You know that. And you want me to find a post for you, someplace lively, interesting. That's what I'm here for, General. There are some Indians out west that need killing. But that's a dirty job. Not the sort of thing that appeals to you, is it? No. No, you prefer a holy war. Save the Union, on with Christian soldiers, free the slaves. Well, I suppose I can't blame you. No one's gonna pin a medal on you for killing Indians and stealing their land. What's the matter? I'm concerned about you, son. You're the only man I know who reached the top of his profession and was on his way down before he was 30. What happens to a boy general when they don't need any more generals? I don't know. Tell me. Well, I suppose the boy general could become a boy farmer or a boy bank clerk or... <laughs> How about a cowboy? I forgot you don't drink. You didn't forget. You didn't forget, you just keep trying. All right. I'll make a drunkard out of you yet. General, you must have something I'm right for. Well, I've got a few jobs here. You can have your pick. I guess you deserve it. Occupation, garrison in Atlanta. A soft life. Sort of like being a prison warden. No. Here's another one. There's an arsenal up in New York State, out of service. They won't be making any more guns. But it's government property, so it has to be protected. I guess somebody's got to make sure the kids up there don't throw rocks through the windows. <laughs> no. All right. Here's a job as cavalry instructor at West Point. Teaching the youngsters how to get on and off a horse. No, General, no. Well, what do you want? I want action. That brings us back to the Indians. They're on the land and we want it. Plain robbery. You won't be able to tell yourself you're fighting for a noble cause. You know, there must be more than a million of them out there. You'll be outnumbered 100 to 1. You'll be fighting against the best light cavalry in the world. And you'll have to chase those devils over the roughest country in the world. Deserts, mountains, prairies. You know, Custer, you could become a living legend. Or get yourself killed. Dead men make better legends. It's up to you. You want to go west? <laughs>
how come they didn't name the boat after you? Take the flowers, Libby. Are you really a general, Audie? Do you think I hired this uniform? It's true what everyone's saying. You won the war all by yourself. No, I was only in 60 charges. I know, I fought in every one of them, too. Alone in bed every night. You're not the only hero in the family. Did I tell you they built a statue of you outside the courthouse? How do I look? Just as you did getting off that boat, 10 feet tall. I used to go out there every day and sit beside you and knit. Can I climb down now, then? Where's your luggage? On the boat. You're going somewhere? Dakota Territory. This time you're going with me. Remember what the man said, for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse. My bags are there. Have we got a comfortable cabin? General Sheridan sent me a message. This time we're enlisting together, my friend. This show being put on for us? They're telling you, General Custer. Get the settlers out of Indian territory or they'll handle things themselves. You seem to understand the Indian point of view, Benteen.
dismount the men, prepare to fire. The Indians are well within their rights, sir. The treaty gives them the authority when they're on their territory. The Indians are out of range. Stop wasting your ammunition. Ready for inspection, sir. Thank you, Major. met with your approval, sir. Very good. One observation. Sir? You only play hail to the chief to the president of the United States. I'll have that corrected, sir. Thank you. Dismiss the men. Yes, sir. Forty... Five! Bettine? Dismiss the troops, sergeant. Troop! Dismiss! Why'd you join the army, Captain? Come in, Major Reno. Just asking the captain here why he joined the army. Sit down. You're a crusader, ain't you? You saved the Union? Now you want to save the world. Well, that's not the kind of army I'm going to run. Yes, sir. Now, Major, what made you choose the military way of life? Well, sir, I was born into it. I came from a long line of professional soldiers, sir. My father fought with Andy Jackson, and my brother was at the Alamo. Your father drunk, too? I'd like to remind you, sir, that I'm an officer and a gentleman. I was wondering, Major, if you come from a long line of drunkards. By the way, that parade of yours out there, that was the most miserable-looking parade I ever saw in all my life. How many drinks do you have today, Major? One or two. Can't remember? I'll tell you why you joined the Army. Yeah, because the Army give you a home. Because blind or sober, no matter how many drinks, you're entitled to the salute. You're entitled to the respect of every officer and man under your command. Major, there's no law that says you can't drink. But if I find you drunk on duty, once, that long line of officers is going to end right here. With you, Major. like him as much as I do, Pinty. Troop ready, sir. Good morning, Major. Good morning, sir. My orders were for full troop, were they not? Yes, sir. The rest of the men fell out for sick call, sir. 
Get down, will you, Major? Yes, sir. Morning, Sergeant. Got an epidemic here, have you? Malingerers, every one of them. Do you mind if I have a word with your patients, if they're not too sick? They're as healthy as mules. Thank you, Sergeant. I want the cook, Major. Yes, sir. Now then, soldier. What's your ailment? Breathing, sir. Comes hard. My lungs, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't look too sick to me, Corporal. Appearances, sir. Inside them, rotten away. Mm hmm I see you've been in the Army a long time, Sergeant. Sergeant Buckley, 15 years, sir. This illness uh, come over you sudden-like? Uh, yes, sir. Must be catching, eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Cook. Many of the men skip breakfast? None, sir. What do they have, a good meal? Yes, sir, sir. Liver onions? Liver and onions? Flapjack. Flapjacks? Steak. Steak? Fried potatoes. Fried potatoes? Biscuits. Biscuits? Pie and coffee. Pie and coffee? All right, thank you, cook. Surgeon, <laughs> this epidemic, do you think it's got something to do with my orders to move out against the Cheyenne? General, this epidemic is going to last just as long as your orders stand. Unless the men get the right treatment, of course, what would you prescribe? A little mild exercise, perhaps? <laughs> Might be just a thing. I try it. With your permission. Major, I want all the men out here in 10 minutes with rifles and full packs. Yes, sir. That goes for officers too, Major Reno. Yes, sir. You heard what the man said? On the parade ground? In full field gear? In 10 minutes? Get the ladder! Get the ladder! Double time!
All right, soldier. Dismiss. <laughs> Lieutenant Cheyenne. doing off the reservation, sir? I don't know, but we're going to take them right back. Gaskins. Yes, sir. We'll split the column, take the wagons up the trail. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, we'll go the hard way. Headed straight into the desert, sir. Hard going, dragging guns and wagons through that sand. Harder on the men, sir. Worse for the horses. 
We've got to punish them, sir. They killed two of our men. Right. We'll lose a lot more than two men if we go chasing them down out... Now, listen. There's 35 Indians out there. If we lose them, every Cheyenne on the reservation will figure he can get away with it, too. Six months from now, we'll be chasing 4,000 of them. That's going to be much worse on the men and a lot harder on the horses. So give the order, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. All right, let's move them out. further. Stag it apart. Put it on runners. Yes, sir. <coughs> Break out the tools. Some no. water. No water. No, not thirsty. The general's some water. order. soldier. The sun will be down in an hour. We'll all have a drink. Come on, boy.
Out of range. Sergeant Gaskins? Sir. Well, now, all right. Bring up the cannon. Yes, sir. Fire. Sergeant. Move them out. Yes, sir. Move them out! Buckley. Sir? Get a rifle. Shoot over their heads. Give him another warning. Knock him down. Let me get him, sir. All right, all right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They think the chief turned into a bird. Shoot the bird down, Sergeant. Shoot it down. Take care of the prisoners. Yes, sir. Come on. How about that Indian up there, General? Just shot him down, Sergeant. Don't you believe a man can turn into a bird? Cheyenne Nation with 265 men. Zaro conquered Peru with 167.
come a long way to tell you men personally that I'm damn well fed up with these Cheyenne raids. The whole army's fed up. Washington's fed up. Murder, rape, scalping, burning, butchery. It's our job to put a stop to all that. And put a stop to it now. If there's any doubt about the policy of my command, I'll give it to you in one sentence. The only good Indian is a dead Indian. Clear enough! Very good, General. Very well put, sir. You don't look too happy, Captain. Don't you approve? I'm afraid I don't, sir. Unless we steal their land and break our treaties, we have no excuse to murder them, too. Another bleeding heart. The country's full of bleeding hearts. Now we even have them in the army. Coffee, gentlemen? Just for two. That's all for now. I don't suppose you have any whiskey. No, I'm afraid not. I know you don't drink. But you might keep some around for those who do. I'll fetch some for you from the store. Thank you. Will there be anything else? Yes. You might tell me that you're pleased to see me. After all, your husband's becoming a national hero, thanks to me. Forty and I are grateful, General. You know that very well. Well, forget the whiskey. It's bad for the liver anyway. How's your liver, George? Fine, General. Stay healthy, George. Your country needs you. You're a lucky girl, Elizabeth. Yes, I know I am, General. Thank you. You two must have a lot to talk about. Excuse me. Now sit down and listen to me. There's an election coming up. The administration needs a victory. I promised them one. It's a long time of the year for a victory. Got across too many rivers, you know that. I just told you it's the right time, George. Election time. And it so happens the Cheyenne have broken the treaty. Left the reservation. Last month, we had orders to give the Cheyenne rifles so they could go hunting. Now you're telling me to kill them because they're gun hunting. I read in all the Eastern newspapers that you're General Custer, the great Indian fighter. I'm told you have the best cavalry regiment in the United States Army. And I'm telling you to go out and fight them. I wish you'd tell me how to surround 10 inches with one soldier. No one knows your war record better than I. I'm betting on Custer's luck. General, there's 4,000 Cheyenne in the villages of the Washita. I've got 400 soldiers. George, I'm out on a limb. I can't crawl back. I think you owe me this one. Dispatch to General Sheridan. Despite overwhelming odds, a great victory was won here today. Factors contributing to our success were one. The Indians were asleep. Two, the women and children offered little resistance. Three, the Indians are bewildered by our change of policy.
Should you require any further contributions towards your election campaign, be so good as to let me know. Your obedient servant, George. Trapped in miners, sir. We caught him crossing into Cheyenne territory. There's been a gold strike on the reservation, sir. Scout. Come on. How long has this rebel been here? Four days, sir. And we can't keep them here, sir. With your permission, sir, I'd like to march them back to the railroad and ship them back east. Gold, Captain, gold. Send them men away, sir, and they'll just bring back a thousand more. Oh, well, we've already pushed the Cheyennes out of half their territory. We can't let these people take the rest of it. Come in, gentlemen. Odie, I forgot to give you this letter. It's from General Sheridan. Thank you, dear. Sorry to keep you waiting, gentlemen. Excuse me. All right. Go ahead, Captain. Tell me. Tell me what? I brought somebody to see you. Who? A Cheyenne. About what? Talk to him. He's right here. Make him any promises? I only promised him that you'd see him. Speak English? Been to Washington twice, has negotiated two treaties, both of which we broke. George Armstrong Custer, an officer in the United States Army. Now, the captain here tells me that you understand English. Is that so? Good. Because I want you to understand me very clearly. I know the only reason you've come here is to threaten me. If I don't promise to keep the miners out of Indian territory, you're going to start killing them. Isn't that true? Am I speaking too fast for you? I understand you. I hope I can make it plain to you that I won't bargain with you about the miners. I will not be blackmailed into making any promises. I am not in a position to make any promises. Whatever I decide to do, I'll do it because it is right according to my way. Right. I know you got human rights, treaty rights, moral rights. 
And if ever I should forget any of them, there's always Captain Benteen here to remind me every day that I am not a politician, not a moralist, not a preacher. When I say moralist, I mean I'm not the best of all men. I'm a soldier. The only rights that concern me are the rights of my soldiers. The only duty that concerns me is the duty of my command. I'll make it very simple for you. The fact that we seem to be pushing you clear off the earth is not my responsibility. The problem is precisely the same as when you, Cheyenne, decided to take another tribe's hunting ground. You didn't ask them about their rights. You didn't care if they'd been there a thousand years. You just had more men and more horses. You destroyed them in battle. You took what you wanted. And right or wrong, for better or worse, that is the way things seem to get done. That's history. I'm talking about history. You are a militarily defeated people. You are paying the price for being backward. And whatever my personal feelings, and I don't say I have any, there's nothing I can do to change all this. Do you understand? I understand. Captain. Hey, Joe. See what's going on out there. Try and shut him up. Yes, sir. these men doing? We're digging for gold, sir. This is government property, mister. Save your breath, Major. We ain't stopping till you let us out of here. This is a parade ground. Yeah, we're gonna keep digging till there's no fort left. Just one big hole. One big hole. Take that pick away from me. Put those picks down. Put them down. Lock these men up, Sergeant. Put them in the guardhouse! Did he say anything to you? No, sir, not a word. Sir, the second platoon's gone. Deserted. Mulligan's platoon? They went after gold, sir. Mulligan started it. Major. Get that mob out of here! Where, General? I don't care, Benty. Open the gates! Throw them all out! You're letting him go into Cheyenne territory. You know that, don't you? I know that, Benteen. I know that. Get him out! Yes, sir. Open the gates! <laughs> Benteen. 
bring Mulligan back here. Yes, sir. Is it an important letter? The one from General Sheridan? Unofficially, the president thinks the discovery of gold in the Dakotas is wonderful news. Best interests of the country. We expect you to use your own judgment. You did what you had to. I use my best judgment. Did you ever see the light, Captain? You're under arrest, Mulligan. Mr. Mulligan's the name now, sir, and happy to see you this fine morning. Come off it, Patty. I'm taking you back for desertion. Desertion? <laughs> if it's men you need, Captain, I'll buy you one in my place. Five. Fifty. I'll buy you a whole regiment. And every man in it'll be named Patty Mulligan. <laughs> Where are the others, Mulligan? The trouble started no sooner we were out the gate. Some wanted to go north, some wanted to go south. I should have known I couldn't get them to stick to hard work. <laughs> For that matter, neither could I. I just wanted to take off my army boots and cool my feet in the clear waters of that stream. And that's how I found the gold. Lovely, isn't it? There's enough here for both of us, Captain. Think of all the good things a decent man like you could do with it. Oh, well. Back it goes. Sooner or later, some other lucky man will find it. Well, I, uh... Now I guess I uh, better put on my boots, huh? I'll do you no harm, Captain. You can have your gun back. Just let me go. All I ask is your word. Desertion. I suppose that's serious business. Sergeant. I was 
Hoping you'd come to see me, General. Chaplin tells me you got new evidence. That I have. But of course, I, uh, I don't know how to put it like a lawyer. Tell me in your own words, then. Well, it's, uh, it's so hard. I, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. All right. Take your time. Sit down. Thank you, sir. They asked me what I wanted. Anything you like, considering it's your last request, says the captain. Then I'll take strawberries. And if they ain't ripe, I'll wait. You get it? I, I told him I'd wait. Go on. I hope you're not in a hurry, General. If there's any man with his eye on the clock, it's me. Where was I? New evidence. Oh, yes. New evidence. I'll give you a drink. Thank you, sir. All right, sit down. talking about strawberries. Do you like strawberries, General? I'm listening. Lovely fruit. Once when I was still a schoolboy, the teacher asked me to show her where the wild strawberries grew. I was happy to oblige. Her being a pretty thing and not much older than myself. Berry picking we went. It was a beautiful day. The berries were shining against the green like rubies. And after a while, she said to me, Mulligan, you're giving them all to me. And I looked in her basket, and it was true. Strange. And then I understood. I was in love. It was the first time. Sergeant, if it's company you want, I'll send back the chaplain. Come morning, you'll be taking more than a few minutes of my time, General. We gotta get to the point. Yes, sir. That's right. Sergeant, your appeal has been processed and denied. Now you have got to present me with new facts. Facts. That's right. Facts. That's what the men all admire about you, General. You always know all the facts. You are talking off the point. I'm talking for my life, General. You haven't said a single word I could give to a court in new evidence. You haven't said anything to make me think that you wouldn't desert all over again. Rules. Regulations. Court martials. I'm talking about the juice in the man's veins. I'm talking about all the good times you never had. Off the point, you say. Well, drinking. Girls. Smoking cigars. Chasing rainbows. That's the point. You've got no feelings, General. There's just an empty place inside. A hole stuffed with rubbish. The flag. The regiment. Duty. You listen to me, Mulligan. You didn't think twice about the soldiers you left behind to do your job. Or maybe they get killed doing it. All you ever wanted was to strike it rich. Well, it wasn't to get rich. I didn't desert for the gold. It was for all those other reasons. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Those are the facts. I have to go now. Go on, General. Go home. Your wife is waiting for you. Sergeant, maybe you wanted too much out of life. Maybe life doesn't have that much to offer. God.
tomorrow, sir. Daybreak. Kostner, I want to introduce you to His Imperial Highness, the Grand Duke Alexis of Russia. Madame, je suis ravi de présenter mes hommages à une aussi charmante personne. Votre Altesse Imperiale nous fait un grand honneur. S'il vous plaît. You know, that Duke's really a nice guy. Too bad I never know what the hell he's talking about. Why don't you learn French? It's the language of diplomacy. Are you trying to tell me I'm not diplomatic? What's he doing here? Well, you know we bought Alaska from the Russians. So we're going to fight the Eskimos? <laughs> now, George, that's not fair. You know something? The first thing the Duke said when he came to Washington, I want to meet Custer, the Indian fighter. It's a fact. Yeah, you're a big man along the Volga. You know something you're not doing so badly at Washington, either. You've got a lot of important friends there. Who? All right, me. What is the Duke doing here? Well, the Duke and a lot of important foreigners are thinking of investing in America's future. Like what? Factories, gold mines, shipping. Railroads? Big country. You can't cross from one side to the other without going through the middle. Yeah, and the middle is Indian territory. They've already had to put up with miners, trappers, soldiers. Railroad comes through, they've got to put up with farmers. Maybe a big territory is not big enough for everybody. All right, then something's got to give, doesn't it? You know this is going to cost us an awful lot of soldiers. I'm just a messenger boy. I got the message, now you've got it. Well, they tell me you're not supposed to keep royalty waiting. Sit down, Jess. You said I got friends in Washington. I got friends in New York, Boston, and Philadelphia because anything I write, the newspapers will print. You're going to write about the Indian problem. They don't care. You're going to tell them you don't have enough army. They don't care. Is there anything you care about, Phil? I won't try to stop you. 
If it'll help you sleep any better, go ahead and attack the railroads. Blast the administration. Damn the Secretary of War. Do you really think that's going to stop the trains coming through? Seems like every time we get together, we get into a fight, George. Bill. How soon does the railroad come through? It's here now. They're laying track along the Bozeman Trail. The only good Indian is a dead Indian. I fed that stupid line to every officer I've sent west. And you know something? The Indian's doing the same thing I'd do if I were in his place. Fight to the bitter end. See any hostiles? Nope. They're here, all right. I can feel it. We're turning this nice hunting ground into sawdust. Just to build a lousy railroad. When this line gets to San Francisco, I'm going to take me a ride and see the Pacific Ocean. You're never going to have enough money to buy a ticket.
says here they're talking about appointing General Custer as governor of the Dakota Territory. Can't read. Can't read, son, never could. My kind of business, a man don't need to read. Solid gold for my own coal mine. Chain too. Ring too. These days, I don't like anything but gold to touch my skin. Even here in my mouth, son. See that? You know why, son? You know why? I like the taste of gold. say there's an article in there about General Custer becoming governor, he gets my votes. He's the one that opened up the territories. The gold territory. Yes, he sure did. General Custer is supposed to be gardeners. Stay down. I can uncouple the car. We can roll down. I'll cover you. of the massacres all over the eastern papers, General. Flags are flying at half-mast. Presidents declare the day of mourning. Tell me, General, why did you choose the Army as a career? A telegram came from the War Department. Shall I read it, sir? To General George Armstrong Custer. You are hereby relieved of command and suspended from active duty. You are ordered to report to Washington, D.C. within 30 days from the receipt of this telegram to appear before a U.S. Congressional Committee investigating conditions in the Indian Territories. Looks like Washington is looking for somebody to blame for the massacre, General. Go on, Major. Major Marcus Reno will assume command of this regiment immediately. Signed, Philip M. Sheridan, Commander. 
Stand up, Major. Is the new officer in command here, do you happen to have any changes in mind? Few. I made this command. I like it the way it is. Is that clear? Yes, sir. When this Washington thing is over, I'll be back. Make no mistake. I'll be back. members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. I have been listening to your debate on the Indian problem for nine days. There is no Indian problem. There is only a white problem. You ask why we nurse hostile tribes one day and kill them the next. Why we sign treaties with one hand and shoot them down with the other? The answer in a single word is corruption. <laughs> the American people have the right to know who is responsible. The answer is look to those who are reaping the profits from this dual policy. There's no point in investigating the military. I defy you to find a single rich officer in the entire United States Army. There's no soldier with his safe stuffed with gold bonds and railroad shares. The guilty parties. You are going to have to look right here in Washington. And you are going to have to look in high places. I know the men who are responsible. And I, I'm going to give you their names. Excuse me, Major, but the mail just came in. Hey, look at this. 7th Regiment has made the front page of the New York Herald. Hey, listen to this. Impeachment procedures have been taken by Congress against Secretary of War Belknap because of General Custer's testimony. Belknap has already tendered his resignation. Can you imagine that, the Secretary of War? Listen to this, sir. Orville Grant, brother of President Ulysses S. Grant, was accused by General Custer of accepting a $1,000 bribe. Where? Here. Brother of the President. Can you imagine? Chester really knows how to hit him where it hurts, oh, doesn't he? Boy. I wonder what happens to the general now. I'll tell you what happens to Custer. The big brass won't kick him out of the army. No, he's too popular for that now. They got their own way of handling his kind. You know what they'll do? They'll probably send him off to Europe to count the horses in the Russian army. Or they'll just leave him on suspension, indefinitely, without pay, until he rots. He'll just sit around, knock on doors, write letters, and eat his heart out. Finally, he'll wind up in some hotel lobby talking to strangers, telling them what a big man he used to be. And it'll serve him right. Cold enough? Did you go for a walk? No, I only got as far as the lobby. 
fellow there, he started explaining to me about the Battle of Gettysburg. So I explained to him about the Battle of Gettysburg. Huh. Anything happened? Any mail? Yes, there was a letter. War Department? Uh, no, for me. From Father. Uh-huh. Did you see Sheridan? No, well, his adjutant left me word that uh, he'd see me this week for sure. He doesn't want to see you, Artie. What's your father write? He wants to have a big family Christmas. Why don't you go home for Christmas? Do you good to get out of Washington for a bit? Not without you. Things are liable to happen here. I gotta be on tap. Let's go back to Michigan. No, I gotta stay here. The Army needs men like me. Sooner or later, they'll find that out. seen our firepower. Now, just take a look at the armor plate. It's two inches thick. It'll stop anything. Why'd you bring me here? You want your command back, don't you? What's this got to do with it? Everything. Just tell the gentleman you'll sponsor it to the War Department. Why'd he come to you? Why didn't he come directly to me? Any questions, General? Any suggestions? Yeah, I don't see any place for the horses. That's right, sir. There won't be any. The cavalry's a thing of the past. The object of war is to defeat the enemy, isn't it? And it doesn't matter how? No, sir. It doesn't matter how. All right, sir. Thank you for the demonstration. Or do you please take another look at it? What for? All right. I'll tell you, it was Sheridan's idea. He came to me and said, have George sponsor the train. He'll get the credit for it, and that'll give me an excuse to bring him back. But it's useless. The War Department will never accept it. They already have, General. The contracts are drawn and ready to be signed. What do you need me for, then? Sheridan's suggestion. We're just trying to cooperate. How about it? War isn't just killing, you know. It's a contest. It's a man against a man. That's a machine. Personal courage wouldn't count. Honor, duty, loyalty, everything a soldier lives by would be wiped out. All you have left? Statistics. How many men would the machine murder today? Hundred? Thousand? Ten thousand? This is the future. I don't want any part of it. Where does that leave you? With the Indians? next on the program? Uh, it's not a program. It's a, an invitation from Sheridan as the officer's annual reunion party. When? Tonight. That would be a good chance to talk to him. Yeah.
If you want to be a soldier, join the 7th Cavalry. Learn to fight with General Custer, learn to fight for Kentucky. You must fight for Oklahoma, Kansas, Maine, and Tennessee. You must fight for Pennsylvania, you must fight for Missouri. If you want to be a soldier, you must fight for glory, oh. You must fight with General Custer, you must fight for Idaho. You must fight for Massachusetts, Michigan, and Delaware. You must fight for Indiana, you must fight for Ohio. Listen, I'm going to put you in a cab. You're going back to the hotel. You're not coming back with me? No, I'll go to Sheridan's party. Have a whiskey. Be one of the boys. Not tonight. You can talk to him tomorrow. No. I need a drink. When I lay in the This is the best ever you got? I'm afraid so, sir. Everything else is taken. All right, bring us a bottle of champagne. Certainly, sir. Well, when did you get here? Six months ago, but you didn't have time to see me. Don't tell me George Custer's been drinking. I've not only been drinking, I'm drunk. Well, good. It's about time. Come on, sit down. Join the party. Take it easy, that's not sarsaparilla. I came here to see you. No serious talk tonight, George. Tomorrow. My regiment's got notice. It's gonna be another big Indian war. That right? I tried to get you back, George, but after you shut your mouth off in Congress, I couldn't. The president hates your guts. Why the hell did you have to name his brother Orville? Who's gonna command my regiment? 
I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're the one who decides. George, for nine days I sat in that congressional hearing room waiting for you to name me. You didn't. Okay, I appreciate that. I haven't forgotten. But I can't budge the president. I never let you down, Phil. Sixty charges I led for you in the Civil War. Sixty, remember? Every one of them. All you ever said to me was, go get them. I went and got them. I never said I can't budge them. Things have changed, George. You mean you've changed? How long has it been since you got on a horse, had somebody take it a shot at you? All you do is run errands for railroads and politicians. You used to be a soldier. I wonder how your scalp would look on my wall. You listen to me, Jim. When the war ended, you came to me for a job and I offered you your pick, remember? But you turned down everything. You wanted action. Those were your words. I want action. And you got it. You got glory, too, didn't you? That's the one you ever cared about. That's what's the matter with you, George. You're a glory hunter. Now, George, this is a party and we're all a little bit drunk. So we're going to forget everything that's been said here tonight. All of it. Maybe you're right, Phil. President? Any objections? Would you like to dictate it? Yeah, uh, I'll dictate it. Whenever you're ready, Audie. To um, His Excellency, the uh, President of the United States, etc. Dear sir. I have written to you during the past months three times without the courtesy of an answer. You have refused me the interview which simple justice demands. Because of your intervention, I stand a man condemned, a man without trial. You get all that? You read it to me? Sir, my regiment has been ordered to join the expedition about to move against the Indians. I appeal to you, not as the President of the United States, but as one soldier to another, to spare me the humiliation of seeing my regiment march to meet the enemy and I not to share its dangers. One. Soldier to another. Libby, I think you might have done it.
Welcome back, sir. Thank you, Captain. Welcome back, General. Thank you. Well, let's get right to it, shall we? Now then. This campaign is going to be a joint operation. General Crook from the south, Colonel Gibbons from the north, 7th Cavalry from the east. The rendezvous here, Little Bighorn, June the 26th. We should have hit them three months ago, General. From my scout report, there's more out there than a few hostiles. Yes, sir. They're building up strength every day. The Cheyenne, the Sioux, the Oglala, the Minikonjo. Give me the reports, Major. Yes, sir. General, this could be their big move to push us clean across the Mississippi. Right, right. At victory here, the little bighorn will break the resistance. This may be our last chance to fight, Major. You've lost a button. This one matches. I'll sew it on. It won't take a minute. Where's my needle? I had it a second ago. Where is it? I just had it here. Doesn't matter. But it was... But it was just here. Dear, don't bother about it. But it would be so simple to sew on if I had it. Of ground, sir. When do we make camp? We don't, Lieutenant. General's orders. Keep the troops moving. Yes, sir. We keep pushing at this rate, we're going to reach the little big horn a day before those other two columns. He wants to win the war single-handed, Benteen. I don't think he cares whether he wins or not, as long as he's up there leading that charge. General, why do you want to get there first? Because first is first and second's nobody. When we cross the river, we'll split the three columns. Yes, sir. Three columns! Party. 
maybe three or four hundred. Which way are they heading? They're just waiting. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Have the men take cover in those trees and set up a perimeter defense. Yes, sir. Take cover! You see anything? No, nothing. There's about 500 Sioux behind that ridge, waiting. Where's Custer? Hadn't shown up yet. We'll wait, Captain. Have your men deployed in the trees. Corporal! Sir? Dispress the men. Yes, sir. All up! Forward! All up! Here, I go ahead. Alone, sir? With a scout. Could I go with you, sir? There might be some action. Hot for glory, ain't you, Lieutenant? You don't win a General Star staying behind, do you, sir? Your orders are to take over. Unless you hear from me direct, you do not advance beyond this point. Clear? Yes, sir. Cheer up, Lieutenant. You may get your chance of promotion yet. Scout! You must lead your peoples back to the reservations. You must go back. I have been waiting for you, Yellow Hair. There are three armies on the way. They'll wipe you out. They'll be here tomorrow. Today is a good day for fighting. Our fighting, it's over. It's over, I tell you. Trains, steel, guns that kill by thousands, no horses. It's over. Steel, just steel, no men. Boys, it's finished. This is all over! For the last time, then. On the charge, Sergeant. We're going after Custer. But, Lieutenant, his orders were to wait. I'm in command. Sound the charge. Yes, sir. Troop! Ho!
sounded like you were being attacked. Shape up your column, get the wounded in the middle. Your orders were... Take a message to Reno and Benteen. 